Hi guys and welcome to this week's vlog. We're in the seaside. I'll be taking moody landscape pictures like this, this, this and one more for good measure. I'm going to be shooting a landscape picture at ISO 8000. ISO 8000. But I explain the reasons why I need to do that in the video. I've got information on this fella here and I've got a shameless plug as well. So grab a coffee and enjoy the video. This week, I'm in Blackpool. I'm going to start my journey off at the North Pier and I've timed it so that A, I'm here for sunset, so hopefully I'll catch some blue hour shots as well after sunset. I might catch some nighttime shots with uh, things like the Ferris wheel moving on the other pier. But uh, while I'm wandering around looking for compositions, um, I made a film two weeks ago, I was up in the Lake District. I shot the boathouse and I was on Derwent Water as well. And I said in that video, there's absolutely nothing wrong with shooting the classics. If you want them for your portfolio, shoot them for your portfolio. Shoot the classics, don't be afraid of it. Well, I got a phone call from a very good friend of mine who said he loved those classic shots and didn't have them for his portfolio. So he wanted to go up to the lakes, to the very same spots where I shot my vlog two weeks ago. So obviously I said, no problem at all. I'll take you. So we both ventured up on Monday this week. I didn't vlog it because I vlogged it two weeks ago. But while I'm wandering around now, looking for different compositions, take a look at these shots I took on Monday. The conditions were completely different, which also just goes to show that you can shoot the same shot over and over again. Different times of the day, different times of the year, in all different weather conditions, you can shoot the same shot again and again and you'll get completely different results. simple composition I'm going for a long shutter speed so I've got my 10 stopper on there my 10 stopper at f16 will give me a four minute exposure so a four minute exposure will really kind of soften that water out now I prefer to shoot at f11 but if I shoot at f16 it's going to give me that extra stop of light so that extra stop of light then we'll take it obviously from a two minute exposure to a four minute exposure my ISO is right down to 100 like I said, I've got my uh, Lee 10 stopper on there and so I've got the 0.9 gradually graduated filter on there to bring some more of that detail down in the sky. I'm using these steps, the steps or wave breakers, whatever they are, steps that go down into the sea. I'm using those as a leading line. There's a bit of a curvature. I'm a little bit further back to, to really appreciate the curvature at this present moment in time, but I'll take a few shots here. Then I'll move down to the curvature and hopefully that'll create more of a leading line shooting off into that ooh, the sea's coming in shooting off into that pier there's no movement in the pier at this present moment in time it looks kind of dull and flat but it's just it's just a nice shot sunset is about 30 minutes away but I don't know if I'm going to get a sunset at this present moment in time but there's plenty of clouds in the sky but uh, I'm hoping I'm hoping and you never know you never know but I like this shot I'll take a few of them like I said I won't talk you through each and every exposure but 
pretty much at this present moment in time, I'm going for that long exposure with the 10 stopper on there. Probably F11 or F16, but I'll put the information down on each picture that I put up anyway. So, yeah, it's a nice night, it's a good night. minutes away from sunset I'm actually under the pier that I've just been photographing and I'm gonna take a HD ash off basically just looking right under the pier and out off into sea nothing very exciting happening I'm as wide as I can go with my 24 mil which is perfect if I'm perfectly honest uh, I would have preferred it if the sea was all the way in it isn't all the way in you can't have it all your own way Gary you have to know that um, but I quite enjoy it. If you've never done HDR before, then a classic shot like this is certainly well worth playing around with. Uh, and it's good. You'll brush up your skills if you shoot like this. Because of the, the contrast, it's, the difference of light, it's probably five, maybe six stops between the light under the pier and the sky we're obviously shooting into. That's a huge difference, a huge variance. So that's where your HDR really, really does come into its own. So I grabbed that shot bang it on the screen and we'll see what that looks like. It's blue hour and I'm super excited. I'm wandering around and Blackpool Tower is lit by all these fantastic LEDs and they're changing color and it just looks absolutely terrific so i'm grabbing some shots here now while i can and the light contrasting against the blue sky is absolutely terrific um what i'm going to try and do though is because over a 30 second exposure the only problem you've got with a 30 second exposure is the lights because they're all changing color one minute they're blue and red and all these fantastic colors but the issue you've got then is that they change color and over a 30 second exposure you'll just end up with a bit of a mishmash of colors or the chances are they'll just be a strip of white so what i'm going to do is and i did this on my last video by the way the woodland video and nobody commented on it now i'm very surprised about that actually one person commented if i'm honest it's my fault because i should have made the writing a little bit bigger uh, it's it's it was too small so i apologize about that so what i'm talking about is on the woodland video if you have a look back at the last video in actual fact that video there you'll see i photographed a squirrel well i photographed a squirrel in the woods okay nothing exciting about a squirrel in the woods but it was actually quite dark so i shot the squirrel at an 8000 iso and nobody picked up on it like i say that's my fault though because I probably didn't make the writing big enough but what I'm going to try and do now is I want to try and increase my shutter speed instead of a 30 second exposure I'm going to ramp my ISO up probably to about four or eight thousand ISO to capture a quicker shutter speed so I can capture a single color or maybe a red and blue color as opposed to it just being a mishmash of colors over a 30 second exposure let's give that a go and let's see what that's like
well that was a right old mixed bag i really enjoyed that tonight uh, don't think for one second there's many award winners in there but what a great mixture what a great couple of hours to spend out and about with your camera um finishing off with some b-roll from blackpool some blackpool b-roll try saying that when you've had a beer or two but that's me done thank you very much indeed for watching it hopefully you guys have enjoyed it if you have if you haven't already subscribed you know what to do press that subscribe button cup of coffee yeah what a great night that was cheers till the next one